you know, I, I gotta, I gotta pick your brain on something. The last time we spoke, um, you said it in passing, mm -hmm. and I didn't pick up on it in the moment until after I thought about it. You said, you know, Prez, I had a chance to to have a conversation with God. That was your actual word. Mm -hmm. You said I had mm -hmm. a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you were on psychedelics at the time. Yeah, yeah. What was that conversation like? Wow. And what was God like? Wow, deep. Um, the most frightening, well, it's the first, my first experience with psychedelic mushrooms or psychedel psychedelic drugs ever. And I didn't do my research, I don't think, enough, as, I, as much as I should have. Um, I ended up taking what they call the God dose and it's where you, it's a lot. I didn't know how much I was supposed to take, so I took all of them, essentially, um, the God dose, the whole bag, uh, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good size. And, During your first time, the first time you ever tried it. Oh yeah. And I remember sitting on the sofa and I'm like, when is this stuff going to kick in? And I remember when it kicked in. And I went on a ride. First, I saw patterns, bright colors, things that didn't make sense at first. And then I felt the presence of God. And I, without a question in my mind, every bone in my body, my soul felt it. I said, I'm in the presence of God. <laughs> I remember I grabbed my wife's head and I made her bow. I said, we need to bow. And that's how I. Oh, 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 hold on. Was your wife on this trip with you? No, no, no. So your wife is just watching over you. She's there. You are under the influence. Yeah. She has no idea what's going on in your mind. And you just grab She's her head. She freaked out. She was freaking out. But I told her we need to bow. It's like we're in the presence of God. And for eight hours, that's where I was at. In the presence of who I believe what the Bible refers to as God. And it wasn't like a being, it wasn't a person. It was a very frightening, it was frightening at times, very straightforward, um, powerful. And it felt like at any point he could like destroy my soul to the point to where it didn't exist, like rip it apart. But there was a love that I never felt ever. It was, I remember I was like feeling so much love that I couldn't control my emotion. So I screamed and I started crying because I had never felt that much undeserving love is what it felt like. And it showed me all my flaws and <laughs> all the bad things and how no human is perfect, but we're all like given second chances and a new day and this love aspect of it, but it was very, it was frightening. Like I couldn't look at it, really. It was, it was what you would imagine a God would be like, but times 10, it validated everything for me. It, I saw earth in a different light. It was really scary. I saw earth, what I believe for what it was. I saw spirit. Flesh didn't exist, and I saw was uh, I was in the presence of like God, the most. It showed me a, a, a when I was tripping at one point. It showed me like a chessboard with many gods on it, and it took its hand, if you want to call it that, whatever, and it smashed all these other little gods, and it says, "I am, yeah, I'm above all them, the maker of all things, and." heard singing and I guess you would say angels or whatever. They were all saying all praise be to the most high. Then they said it for eternity. They were bound down at it. But the, yeah. And I remember okay. telling my wife, I was like, if I was, I told my wife, if, if I was going to write the Bible, I would write it in this state of mind when I was tripping. Um, and it wasn't until I read the Bible, uh, the chapter of Ezekiel is when I was like, that's the stuff I was seeing. You know, the depictions of what angels look like with the wheels and eyes and all that. 
it was trippy like that. And I had, for the most part, was I was in the presence of God. And then it sent me on this death trip. I thought I was dying. So they call it an ego death, where it destroys your ego and your ego dies. And I felt for the first time what it felt like to have no ego, no identity, no nothing, just bare, naked, yeah, in the open for God to see and judge. And I got judged and it made me live through all the 10 commandments. For me, it felt like years that went by, but I guess it was a few minutes or I don't know, but I had to live through all the 10 commandments from start to finish and I understood them. And I realized that how often we don't do that. And it tripped me out big time. And I said, oh, we messed up. I kept saying that to my wife. I was like, we messed up so bad. We're so messed up. We're so messed up. We don't, yeah. I was like, we're terrible, terrible, terrible species, terrible people. And how important it was. And from that day forward is where like, I give thanks just for being here, you know? Cause we don't, I feel like we don't deserve it at all. So I was shown that. And I got shown a, a dark place where you go if your soul's not clean. And that was terrifying, like in the dark abyss. Yeah. And so in a nutshell, were, that, we, we, we would refer to that place as hell. Yeah. You were able to get a glimpse of what that place looks and feels like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To me, that's what it was like. And it was dark, endless darkness, darkness at a bottomless pit. And I was surrounded by serpents and I couldn't see anything, but it was void of love, void of anything. It was just void. It was like a dark, endless, bottomless void and not being able to feel hurt me the most, not feeling loved hurt the most and not remembering loved past events like messed me up. It, it stripped you of all that and put you in this dark bottomless place. And I remember thinking, you have to be here for eternity. And you can't even ask. It's too, it was too late to ask for forgiveness. Too late to ask for anything. I was hopping on my phone. I was trying to call my dad and call my mom and everybody. I wanted to be forgiven. I wanted to forgive people. I had, it was 11 o'clock or something like that at night. I had ran to my next door neighbor knocked on his door luckily he answered and he like helped me get through this whole trip of yeah and it was it helped me see things in a different light of like it was good to be here and hell was a place I did not want to go to of just no love and, and void of all things void of it was just void and that and it was cold void yeah it it it, it that's what scared me of being void of love and not being able to ask this entity that was composed of love, like, hey, help me out. It was like, it said it turned us back and it said, I don't know you. And I said, oh, that hurts so bad. And then it had brought me back up. Uh, I believe it It was weird because I don't know, most of the people in my much, in my trip, they were, they looked like me. And the stories of the Bible, it told me that that was the story. That whole book is about our people and why we're in the position we're in today. And that whole book was written about Black people. Um, it's Black history. I remember my hair had grew real long and went inside the earth and came out in Africa underneath this big tree. And I could see like all my ancestors there underneath this tree. And they were all connected through my hair. It was weird. Um, that's the best as I can describe that part. And yeah, it was a, it was an experience I'll never forget. Yeah, I'll so, say that. So coming out on the other side of that, and and I'm gonna wrap this thing. And thank you so much for being so gracious with your time. No um, you know, thank you so much. You know, I could I can literally talk to you all day. Um, and, and I just want to be mindful of your time. Uh, oh, but yeah. coming out on the other side of that, how, how did, is, I know you were under the influence. 
Mm-hmm. But do you look at this as no? I it, 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 I was under the influence, but it unlocked a part of my mind, mm-hmm. and it was real. That was not a hallucination. That was not me just tripping out and dreaming. Mm-hmm. This is real. What I experienced was real. Or do you look at it as I just went on a hell of a trip and I don't believe in anything that that I experienced that day? No, it shook me to my core. I, that was more real than this place is. Like it was, I, I, I can't, it was, it was weird. It's hard to describe. Like I watched reality legitimately shatter away when the creator god took it all down it was it's gonna sound weird but it was all no i'm not gonna i don't know it was just weird it was weird go 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 for it go for it 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 was what it it, he took it all down and it was all a big show for him and everybody who we ever encountered in life that we did wrong to and good to sit on this jury people and how we affected them they have they could have a say so and how you left your mark on this place was it a good experience was it a bad experience and i watched reality crumble away and i saw reality for what it was and that look and felt and time didn't exist there it was it was it was the most realest experience I've ever ha- had. It's more real than real life. Um, but it feels good to be able to experience real life is what it was like for me. So I would come back from the trip. It would go off in spurts. I'd come back and I'd hold my wife's hand. I'd hold her and grab her. But like it, it's so good to be here in this physical form. I can feel you. I can. I'm here, you know. Um, but. That was that was more real than than anything I've ever experienced in my life, even reality. And that's was a big advocate, I guess, for me being a Rasta. It 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 showed me through my visions that that was as close as I could get to the true roots of some of our practices and, and beliefs, you know, and the way we should live life accordingly in this realm. Um, but yeah, I, I think that has it's, it's stuck with me. It's gonna forever change my life. It's changed how I view life, how I interact with people big time and how, and it helps my relationship with me and my mom and my dad. Uh, right prior to that mushroom trip, I had, like I was done talking to them. During that mushroom trip, it made me love them and see them for who they are, past their mistakes, understand why they were the way they were in a different light and accept them for who they were. Because it was like, when I was tripping, it's like the creator was saying, be careful about how you judge people because that's the way I'm going to judge you. And I didn't like that. Yeah. That's deep. Uh Uh-huh. That's deep. That changed my perspective on life big time. Huh. Okay. Um I wouldn't advise talk- taking mushrooms. I wouldn't, because it it can it can make you, I don't know. It it will change your life. I'll just say read the Bible. That's a mushroom trip, right? That uh, read the Bible. That's all the Bible is in that mushroom trip. You just find off reading the Bible. You know, it's so interesting. Um I, I never spoke to anybody who who took a mushroom trip. Uh, quite like yours Mm -hmm. is it common to 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 go to a place of because you called it a god trip at the beginning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does does everybody who take that uh, that amount that type of mushroom if you will do they all have the same if not a similar experience i've heard that they have a similar experience of uh whether they believe or god or not they say that there was definitely uh an all supreme being a great consciousness that was in control of all things um there's been atheists who have taken this high dose of mushroom and they've come back not atheists they said nope there's without a questionable doubt there's god and 
how you envision that is different. No one's ever, I've never seen or heard anyone say that they've seen a dude sitting in a castle. I didn't see that either. It was just, it was a understanding and a knowing that this presence that we were like, I'm not worthy of looking at. It was shielded by sun ray and sunlight. We weren't worthy of looking at it. I got the, and without a doubt, it was like it was speaking telepathy. I didn't even have to speak to it like that. It just, I knew that, oh, this is dad. This is where we come from. This is the one, you know, it was like that. And then the opposite of that was a, a dark spirit. They were represented by the sun and it was a, a, a dark sun. And the dark one was in control of her humanity. And he had influence to make us see, believe and feel things that were not real, but led us to believe they were real to keep us away from this one. And they were constantly fighting in this trip. And I watched these two battle it out for people, for souls. And it was, yeah, it was like that. So I believe in, there's a dark spirit that we're always influenced by, pressured by, fighting against. And there's one that is waiting up, waiting for his children to wake up that you guys come for me. There ain't nothing to be fearful of. You have the same abilities to be gods on this realm too and conquer all things. We just got to wake up and realize that we've been under an illusion that it's not like that. That's what it told me. I don't know if it's like that for everybody, but those were some of the messages that, that I got that we come from a one supreme being and we should act accordingly. Yeah. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.